The News 4 I team is learning it has been a violent and dangerous month inside D.C.'s juvenile detention center. D.C. police and paramedics have been called repeatedly to the long troubled facility. Investigative reporter Ted Oberg joins us now to explain what is going on there, Ted. Yeah, Sean and Jim, D.C.'s juvenile detention center has had very public issues in the recent past with overcrowding and understaffing. It was last year when a D.C. judge hauled them into court to explain themselves. Oversight reports show the start of this year showed some improvement. But DYRS told us yesterday there have been 14 assaults just in the last 10 days inside this secure facility, suggesting any improving trend is hit a roadblock. EMS six responds, multiple assaults at 1000 Olivet Road, Northeast. Police reports, dispatch records, and government sources familiar with the incidents confirmed just days ago, last Friday at 6.30 p.m., a fight inside D.C.'s Youth Service Center in Northeast D.C. got so severe, multiple ambulances and police units were sent to calm things down and treat injured young people inside what is supposed to be a secure detention facility. We have uh, patients on multiple floors. Dispatch calls made clear there were patients injured in the fight waiting for help on the first and third floors. We're getting a second call for an unconscious person on the third floor. At least one of them was knocked out, according to multiple calls. The D.C. Department of Youth Rehabilitation Services confirms to the I-Team one person was treated at the facility and three young detainees had to be taken to the hospital. Still trying to figure it out. Right now we have three. D.C. police reports note all three had serious injuries and four juveniles were arrested and charged with felony assault. It appears to be the most serious, but far from the only recent trip by D.C. police to calm things down inside the juvenile jail. Two days earlier, on May 8th, another D.C. police report notes another assault with significant bodily injury. Police arrested four young people in that incident as well. And DYRS confirms a third trip on May 4th for yet another group disturbance. But that's not all the IT team uncovered. In the last four weeks, DYRS tells us four young people inside the facility tested positive for substances, three of them for opioids. In one of those cases, it was so severe the young person needed Narcan. We're told they responded positively to the Narcan, but it's not clear how the drugs got into the secure facility. In a statement, an agency spokesperson told the IT team they're investigating adding it's unacceptable that anyone would compromise a youth's pathway to success and the agency is taking proactive measures to enhance security. So but that's pretty much what the director of the agency told D.C. Council in February when he says opioids were also found inside the facility. It's a high concern and uh, we recently did uh, uncover youth that had tested positive for fentanyl and uh, that is... Uh, one of the top priorities of our uh, internal investigator. High concern and a top priority for the investigator. We invited DYRS to join us for an interview today to help understand why all of this is happening. They declined. All of this comes as population reports. Sarah, there are more kids inside this secure facility than there have been in years. This week, the population listed there at 108 young people. Their maximum capacity is just 98, Sean. Wow. Uh, al Alarming. Yeah, I, I just when you hear this, I hope people are watching and listening and they can make some changes. Something needs to be done. Ted, Absolutely. thank you.